Feeling like a slave to time? Learn how to get control over your time. Stay tuned. Damon here from NLP Gym. NLP techniques eliciting your timeline. If you haven't already, please click subscribe to this YouTube channel so you can get these videos on a regular basis. So time and timeline. Let's make a distinction first before I get into this, what clock time is and what your sense of time is. Clock time is there's 60 seconds in a minute, there's 60 minutes in an hour, there's 24 hours in a day, on and on and on. That's not the kind of time that I'm talking about. That sort of time is an objective measurement of time and as long as we all agree on 60 seconds equaling a minute and 60 minutes equaling an hour, we're all in agreement with that, it's objective. We're talking about subjective time. We're talking about your sense of time. And we all have our own individual sense of time. And if you don't believe this, um, think about when there is a scheduled event or a meeting or something like that. Say the meeting is at 5 o'clock. Some people will show up early. Some people will show up on time. And some people will show up late. Maybe some people won't show up at all. Because we all have a different sense of time. And NLP discovered this amazing um, concept of how we know what our sense of time is. And this is what NLP is all about. It's all about modeling that subjective reality. How are we creating our reality? And our sense of time is a huge part of our reality. So there's two, there's two types of um, timelines. And one of them would be called end time. And that is when I perceive time being through me, like it comes through me, and this is called end time. So the future is out here and the past is behind me. And it could be a variation of that. It could be slanted this way, it could be slanted that way. On, in rare cases, some people actually have their past in front of them and their future behind them. As you might imagine, this can create a lot of problems. So if you're one of those people and through this process you discover that your timeline is actually flipped, I would recommend working on getting your timeline back to this way where the future's in front of you and the past is behind you. Some of us are through time. And that means that on one side of us, like say this side, would be the future. And on the other side of us would be the past. Now it doesn't really matter which side is which. Uh, for me and for most people, the future is on this side, the past is on this side. kind of makes sense when you think about uh, I access and cues. When I look up to my right, I construct. So that's the future. I haven't experienced the future yet, so I kind of construct it when I think about it. I have to imagine it. And in this way, if we look up left uh, with our eyes and look up into the left, this is visual remembered. So in that sense, the past is something that is remembered. So we don't have to imagine it, it's already happened. And then your present is sort of right here in front of you. So you're actually seeing your timeline in front. Uh, people who are through time, like me, tend to be on time. You can kind of see your timeline in front of you and you kind of know where things are. People who are in time, when their timeline goes through them, a lot of times they, are, they tend to be the people who are late most of the time. And it's funny because I ask people who are in time, what is their sense of time if they're late or if they're on time? And often their response is, well, when I'm here, I'm, I'm, I'm on time. When I'm here, I'm here. And they, then this is because they can't see their past behind them unless they take a look. And their future is in front of them. Uh, they're just not noticing uh, timeliness as much as a through time person is. Now, there are exceptions. That doesn't mean that if you're through time, you're always going to be on time. And if you're in time, that you're always late. That's not necessarily true. So find out which you are and how there's an easy way to do that. And I like to take a simple activity like brushing your teeth. Most people brush their teeth. Most people do it twice a day, if not more. Hopefully you do. Think about the last time you brush your teeth. So if it was this morning, think about where, imagine you brushing your teeth this morning. Picture that. Now, when I do that, I kind of see it slightly to the left and a little bit right here. And that's where that picture is. I see myself brushing my teeth. Now, that doesn't mean that yours will be there. Look for that picture. Just imagine it. And then in your uh, space, your personal space, where do you see that picture? 
Is it over here? Is it over here? Is it behind you? Or do you have a sense of it being like right here, right now? Then go out to one week ago. Imagine brushing your teeth one week ago. Now for me, that goes more over here. For you, that might go this way, and for, for other people, it might go behind you. And if I think about brushing my teeth one month ago, it goes a little more over here. Again, this doesn't mean this is the right way. Uh, discover your way. Now, the more I keep imagining brushing my teeth into the past, it goes further and further out to my left. And it actually starts to come down a little bit. So my past timeline kind of does this. Now think about brushing your teeth in the future. Now when I think about that, I see it right here. And if I think about it like one day or a week into the future, it's about right here. And then the further I go, the tendency is that my timeline sort of goes up into the future. If we, for if you're in time, you're, it should go further, your picture should be further and further out in front of you. And it can be this way or that way. Through time just means your timeline comes through you. It doesn't necessarily mean it's a straight line. So listen your timeline. Uh, I like brushing your teeth because most people do it. And find out where's your timeline. Now if you're a through time person, which means your timeline comes through you like this, then play around with turning your timeline where the future is in front of you and the past is behind you. And for you end time people, try a through time timeline. And really take a moment to let that settle in. It can be a little disorienting at first. It can maybe feel not so right. You might feel some ecology coming up, like some resistance. If that happens, just get in touch with that part of you that's resisting and just assure that you're only doing this for experimental purposes and anything you change, you can change right back. Experience what it's like <clears throat> to be the opposite timeline that you're used to using and does that benefit you in any way? Now there's so many uses for this and this is extremely powerful. I don't have time in this video to go into it all. Perhaps in future videos I will. What you can do for this though in general is you can take the past whether it's here or here or even here and you can float above it and drop in and heal old wounds by bringing in resources you didn't have when maybe certain things happened uh, in your past that were painful. For the future, you can set goals, whether your future's here or here, or even here. You can set goals, make a compelling image of you achieving that goal, and then dropping that image into your future timeline. This is very powerful. And so that you sort of, it's sort of like you have a laser going to accomplishing that goal. Especially if that picture is compelling, make sure it's compelling. And it sort of will guide you into moving in that direction. It's extremely powerful. That's two things that you can use. Like I said, there are many, many uses for this. Try those out and see how they work for you. Make sure that you don't leave yourself in the past and you don't leave yourself in the future. Make sure you come back to the present. And for future pictures, always make sure they're disassociated so that you don't give yourself a sense of having accomplished something that you actually haven't. And if you're going into the past, just make sure you come back to the present so you don't get yourself caught in a time warp. So that is eliciting your timeline. Again, many uses for that, and maybe in future videos I'll go into that. Just try that out and have some fun with it. Check out our website, nlp-gym.com. Follow us on Facebook for upcoming trainings, and you get real-time updates on that, and future practices that we're holding. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. And immediately following this video, uh, there's a little bit of information about a free online training that you can sign up for right now. Take care.